What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be doing another mock draft. That's right. It is mock draft Monday. It's going to be one round, no trades for the trades video. You guys have to show up tomorrow because you guys know that's the regular schedule on the channel. But again, for you guys who are new, I would love for you guys to stick around, like, comment, subscribe. You guys know what to do. If you guys have not already done so, link in the description, join the Discord. It's in every single video description. We have over 700 members there now, which is ridiculous. And uh, do stuff over there like all 22 tape studies that you can't do over here on YouTube because, say it with me, copyright issues. So let's jump right into this. Let's have a good time. And starting off with the number one overall pick, I again re-emphasize this, no trades. That's why I do this because it puts me in a weird situation that, you know, can't get out of. So you force a pick to get the best player available. And um, at number one, the best player available to me is Jalen Carter. I just think that in a very thin defensive interior class, especially with not an early second round pick, you're going to be scraping the barrel to get help on the defensive interior side. Jalen Carter is the highest ceiling out of anybody in the class. Uh, edge rusher, you could definitely still acquire a very nice one there at the end of round two. So I am going to go Jalen Carter there at pick number one. Once again, no trades. So at pick number two, you could end up going after someone like CJ Stroud or Bryce Young. I don't think that it really matters because whoever is taken first will probably end up being the guy, or whoever is not taken will end up probably falling to the Colts. I don't really think I need to waste very much time here. I like Bryce Young more than CJ, so I show you my board right below my face. You get to see where both Bryce and CJ land on my board, but CJ's tape in All-22 just dropped as of this morning, where you get to watch in All-22 versus Ohio State. Uh, just kidding versus Georgia, as well as, I believe, Michigan. So I'm very excited to see that. Uh, and that could definitely shake up some things because I'm a little bit worried about some games with Bryce Young, uh, mainly that Mississippi State game. But I still think that it's the right thing to do to go Bryce Young at number two. Uh, number three, again, these picks should be probably at least on the board for a trade out. But I think the best thing to do, if you cannot which is the point of this episode, is to be able to get the best player available. And y'all know what happens. It's pretty much whoever is left among those three. Now, if I were to run this and say, let's just say D'Amico's fortunate, ends up getting like Jimmy G or something like that. He's like, you know what? I want to get the best player available at number two. We'll get Jalen Carter, Will Anderson. Then things get a little interesting if I did a no trade mock at that point. But I don't think that's the case. I think the best thing to do is to get a quarterback, a young guy. Uh, and then let the fall fallout go to Arizona. Pick number four, uh, again, not going to waste very much time here. I think CJ, especially with his performance versus Georgia, has been able to secure himself as that number two quarterback, at least. Uh, Will Levis is a great player in my eyes. A lot of people doubt him. I, I don't think he's nearly as bad as people think he is, but I also am not anywhere near that rank number three. For you guys who probably want to see where he's at, he's at number 22, so not too far behind. Pick number five for Seattle. Again, if the board fell like this, um, I think Will Levis is the smart decision. Tyree Wilson is the next logical decision. I know a lot of people are going to hate if I take Will Levis. I know it. Y'all come to my comment section and tell me, and I don't make this solely to make you guys happy. That's just the bottom line. I want to make sure you guys get something that's both palatable as well as realistic and being able to give you guys content that, you know, makes sense. Like if I just did stuff to make you happy, there's no integrity to what I'm doing. And uh, when looking at the Seattle Seahawks, they run the identical offense that Kentucky does. And you're going to have to pay Geno. Apparently talks are really good. I, I don't trust what the hell Geno Smith's going to tell the media about a longer term contract. If there's actual more momentum coming out of Seahawks camp saying that there is that momentum and uh, we get to see that deal done, absolutely, I'm going Tyree Wilson here. Zero doubt in my mind. But I cannot, until that deal is done, look away from the fact that this is a perfect system fit. There are better weapons, better offensive line, and that is where Will Levis is going to improve on how he played in college versus a lot of these quarterbacks are going to a worse situation than they were in college. So again, it's not like a bite me type moment saying I'm going to go Will Levis. But at the same time, you guys have to understand that's a perfect system fit. And there's so many edge rushers in this class. I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing to do to go after someone like Will. Now, could you go Anthony Richardson in a trade back? Sure. 
I respect that. But to say that Will Levis is a bad pick, not really the best thing to say because he is a perfect fit and he's a very high level, uh, high value position. And the last thing I'd ever want to do is put Drew Locke behind my offensive line and then just pray. I'd rather have Will Levis there and then just hope to God that the rest falls into place, which I trust Pete Carroll to do so. Uh, Pick number six, it's down to Tyree Wilson as well as Miles Murphy. Again, I know I can get a corner there later on. I also think this is a great trade back spot. If Seattle ends up going after an edge rusher, let's say the Geno Smith deal gets done, they'd probably trade back anyway. Then I think this would be a great trade down spot with the team looking for Will Levis, looking for Anthony Richardson. But since we cannot, we are not. And Tyree Wilson's a great fit. I like the idea of Miles Murphy being more on the outside. I think corner and edge rusher is a position I would totally go after. It is. I don't think that it's, if you have 10 players of equal value, that's the position I would immediately target. No, not at all. But it is, given the players who are available, the best pick, and it is not that far from a positional need. I would love to see Miles Murphy there in rotation with uh, James Houston and then be able to see him across from Aiden Hutchinson. You can win through the Battle of the Trenches. That's how you're going to dominate. If you can dominate the line of scrimmage, you're going to make the playoffs. You're going to make a good playoff run. Pick number seven. Uh, Tyree Wilson's a pretty big favorite for this pick. I've just become a big fan of going after like chemistry fits. And you got Nate Hobbs there. I would love to pair up Devon Witherspoon with Nate Hobbs. You can go offensive line here as well. I think that your early second could give you guys something that is, you know, you can get a Dewan Jones potentially at that spot. So I don't think you need to spend an O-line pick at this one. And uh, a lot of people are loving, loving Devon. I would personally trade back. But uh, since we cannot, because again, this is the no trades mock, I'm going to pair up Nate Hobbs with Devon Witherspoon. Uh, pick number eight. Again, this is a the identical top eight to what I did last time. I think it's going to be an identical top nine, but... Uh, Tyree Wilson, we already know that's just probably the best pick that you can do at pick number eight. Uh, But pick number nine, if Frank Reich's being brought in, definitely means that you're going to be going after a QB, whether that's going to be Derek Carr with a a trade acquisition or it's going to be Anthony Richardson. And I trust Frank Reich to train a big, strong-armed quarterback with some decision-making issues and be able to make him at least starter quality. And uh, if you can do that with Anthony Richardson, you're going to go really, really far because he has the best arm I have ever studied. And granted, I've only been studying since the Joe Burrow draft. Uh, he He's up there with Herbert for sure. I just don't see guys who just look so effortless throwing a ball that is much faster than any other quarterback that I've seen. Like just really special level of arm talent. But uh, if he's able to be refined, there's no looking back. He's going to be an absolute all-star. Pick number 10 for the Eagles. Uh, We're just going to continue with the exact same way that we did it last time. If Joey Porter's here, we're going with it. So pick number 11, let's change things up a little bit. Uh, Pick number 11, we heard that the Titans are trying to make a move up to one. They have put an offer in. Granted, probably not a very good one. Hasn't been obviously accepted. But I don't think that uh, if you're trying to move up to one, quarterback's on your mind. So for the people who are getting on my ass, for back when I used to go Will Levis to them, it seems like that's a very, very likely option. A tackle definitely is the position I would like to target first, but I want to change things up and I don't always want to go after someone like Darnell Wright. Uh, I want to look at receiver as well because receivers do have a lot of value. You see that in free agency. Like tracking free agent value in terms of their price usually indicates what the NFL thinks, the value of a player. And wide receivers got a massive pay bump. So that's a whole other reason why they got rid of A.J. Brown, right? They ended up getting a younger A.J. Brown. So looking at the guys who are available, Jordan Addison's an amazing compliment to that. I think he'd be awesome. Quentin Johnston, a lot of people are saying he was he didn't do that well uh, versus Georgia. And to be honest, who else were they going to throw to? I love guys like Tay Barber and stuff like that. But, you know, it's kind of, they literally schemed against him, similar to how Georgia schemed against Aiden Hutchinson. Like, they're, it's pretty obvious that, you know, you, this is the dude to play uh, the game plan against. So I don't think that should be out of the question. Having two large boundary receivers, never a bad thing. But looking at guys like Jordan Addison, I would love that for this team. Of course, you could be in the next round, go after Josh Downs, Tank Dell, Jalen Hyatt. 
and it doesn't really fully make sense to go after someone here. But if you're trying to help out your quarterback, I would totally want somebody who's going to be reliable over the middle, really solid separation skills. To me, I think that's Jordan Addison. Uh, Quinn Johnston ranks higher, but y'all see it's literally one spot. You can choose whichever one you want, but I want to have the idea, like you could go Quentin Johnston to take him away from the Texans as well, but one of these receivers is going to be palatable for um, for number 12. And I'm just going to choose the one that I think would fit best. Jordan Addison, to me, would be your best return if you were to go wide receiver. Again, we're trying to change it up a little bit because I don't like making the same mock draft over again. I know you guys don't like consuming the same mock draft. So D'Amico Rides is here. Uh, there's apparently a pretty negative sentiment on Brian Breezy in the NFL based on the mock drafts I've been seeing uh, from people who actually get insider information, which means that they're making mock drafts more off realism than kind of a blend. But that's okay, because uh, I think Brian Breezy wouldn't be a bad choice here. But again, to change things up a little bit, and I just did a Texan seven-round mock draft, so y'all could check that out too. Uh, offensive line, not too far off of a position I'd go in the first at all. Uh, edge rusher, not a bad position at all. So I think wide receiver with Quentin Johnson just feels the right thing to do. I know it's not a D'Amico Ryan's type pick. He's definitely the dude to grab a defensive player. And you could go edge rusher here. Lucas Van Ness, I restudied him. I have no clue why he's getting this hype. He's a strong dude who pushes in a straight line. It really doesn't make sense to me. So uh, I'm going to pass on that defensive interior role. And you could go Brian Branch here, personally. I would really love seeing him paired up with Jalen Pitchery. But, again, you could go Peter Skaronsky, fill that guard spot, and go for a tackle in the long run. I am going to... Man, this is tough. This is actually really tough. Uh, I'm going to go Quentin Johnson here. I'm going to get a boundary receiver. I'm going to get an upgrade over Nico Collins. I don't think Brandon Cooks is going to be on the team for much longer. Uh, that's why I took... Uh, Jordan Addison with the pick before, but you're still going to be able to get a really good weapon there. Wide receiver, extremely highly valued. We saw how many of them went in the first last year. Uh, NFL certainly looking for those superstars on the come up. I think Quentin Johnston has a little bit of DeAndre Hopkins in him. Pick number 13. I'm debating on going Brian Branch here because I just think he's awesome. Uh, this pick should probably be traded for Aaron Rodgers, but once we see like a list of the teams who are making offers, then we could start doing that. And again, I said no trades. That's one where we know Aaron Rodgers probably not going to be in Green Bay. But for the time being, I think the best move would be to go an offensive lineman here. Again, I'm. it is kind of like wishy-washy, but I'm going to be going Darnell Wright out of Tennessee. He's my top tier right tackle. The Steelers are looking at him as probably for their first round pick. Potentially could be that pick 33, depends on how high people are on him, because he does have technical flaws, but this dude is an absolute all-star if you train him right. He just has the highest ceiling, definitely similar to Evan Neal, not going to be that day one impact, but could really, really be special. Pick number 14 for the Patriots. I'm going to go away from the offensive line pick for the time being, because I always go offensive line, and we're going to go back to the Brian Branch pick does definitely feel like a Bill Belichick thing. Go back to Saban, go back for a DB, and Brian Branch is just super special. I love Brian Branch, so we'll see what happens when that time comes. Pick number 15. So Lucas Van Ness feels out of realism, like a perfect fit for the Packers. Like you, You're pretty much out of luck on Rashawn Gary for half of a year, and um, definitely feels like something you could go after. But looking at other players... I would not count out someone like Zay Flowers being a pretty cool option. They do like the bigger wide receivers. So JSN feels probably more complimentary to someone who is like Christian Watson. So definitely in there, in there for consideration. And I do want to start taking wide receivers more often. Uh, Jack Smith and Jigba, if he does run fat, I think he might run a 4.6 or a 4.55 and slower. He just got tracked down by dudes who ran slower than 4.5. Usually that means that you're slower than those dudes. But... Uh, if JSN runs in the four fours, I absolutely think he should be a viable option, especially for what this team's looking for. He is safe, reliable, good blocking target, and um, I'm going to send it. We're going to send it through. Jackson Smith and Jigba there for uh, the Packers. Pick number 16. I think that cornerback could be on the horizon for this team. You got Keely Ringo, Emmanuel Forbes, Cam Smith. I rewatched Cam Smith. Honestly, uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident in my evaluation from him from a year ago. 
nothing special, very good, just like nothing insane. And uh, I think that could be the route I want to go. You could, of course, go offensive line and uh, end up with someone like Peter Skoronsky, but some teams probably will see him as a pure guard. It's tough to go after someone who's been playing left tackle this whole time and just say, hey, you're going to be a pure guard. When I could end up going after somebody probably much later on who will be a good fit there. So with that being said, I think the right thing to do is to go a cornerback. And I love Emmanuel Forbes. I'm going to be taking him from my Steelers, who I am very passionate about. So Emmanuel Forbes is the guy. The Steelers, Paris Johnson feels like a very good option. But at the same time, I don't always want to force a tackle pick to this team. And you could go a corner here. Most likely, I am going to end up going Paris Johnson. I don't like Paris Johnson nearly as much as the guy next to me. But uh, looking at the guys available, I think Keely Ringo is a perfect fit. I don't like Christian Gonzalez nearly as much as everybody else. Just me. Tyreek Stevenson's awesome. I love him too. So the Steelers could pass on a corner here and end up with one very good one at the beginning of the next round. So I think the best thing to do is to go offensive line. I think Peter Skoronsky fits well for this reason. I like Paris Johnson. Again, not as much as everybody else. Uh, but I think Peter Skoronsky can fit that guard role. And to be fair, we kind of need that. So he has a solidified role for the next 10 years on our roster. The question is, can he be the guy to play left tackle or will he end up playing on our guard spot? Uh, Peter Skoronsky is great value there. Pick number 18. Another reason why I do not take corner at number six. You can end up with somebody right here. Christian Gonzalez or Keely Ringo. To me, I'll take Keely Ringo 10 out of 10 times there. Uh, it could end up being a very stupid thing for me to say, but at the same time, I just don't trust Christian Gonzalez. He needs a lot more refinement. And I'm not necessarily focused on, um, or I'm not very confident in Detroit being the one spot for him to be refined into the player he needs to be. But at pick number 19, uh, we're seeing Paris Johnson fall, by the way. And that could happen. It could happen. Just stuff happens in the in the NFL draft. Uh, I'm looking at Christian Gonzalez, and I think that's the best choice for this team because you do have a long time horizon versus a team that's immediately competing. So getting somebody like Christian Gonzalez to be able to step in and be able to take time to develop, is that's the right mold. That's what you're supposed to be going after. Uh, pick number 20, I damn near go Paris Johnson at this point just out of spite. Just to say, you know what, we're going to put you at guard. But I think Paris Johnson belongs as a tackle. So I'm not going to do that to him. Uh, other routes I can go at this pick. Brian Breezy, certainly. I don't think that's against the rules. You know, he is perfectly fine at being on that defensive interior. But I would probably wait till the next round and then get somebody like Mozzie Smith, who's a little bit bigger, who's a little bit more run oriented. Um, or Keanu Benton. You could end up getting Keandre Coburn, who's 340 pounds as well, and then have somebody for really good value end up being that dude for you. Uh, other positions, some people say wide receivers on the horizon. I would not be against that. I'm debating just taking Paris Johnson. I really am, because I think that would be such a baller move, because I don't know if he will end up just being a guard, or he could end up being a tackle. Uh, we're going to do it. This is just the craziness of the draft. We're going to take Paris Johnson and put him at um, guard for the time being. Could end up replacing Abraham Lucas if Abraham gets hurt or if, you know, Paris Johnson's just better. Pick number 21. So the whole entire reason I took the receivers earlier so I can have other picks to go with at this spot. Not solely, but uh, Michael Mayer would be a good pick. I don't think he's that special. I watched his most dominant game. Still don't think he's that special. He's just a really good blocking guy. I would love to see Zay Flowers on the squad. I think he'd be a very nice compliment to Keenan Allen as well as Mike Williams. Uh, you could definitely see Bijan Robinson. Again, PFF, why the hell have you not updated my buddy Jack Charbonnet's picture? That's literally not him. And I just feel bad that you know they can't even get that right. But I think Zay Flowers is a smart move. Broderick Jones might be the better move, though. You can pair him back up with Jamari Sawyer. That'd be cool. I think by doing that, you take him away from like another potential competitor in the playoffs. I think that's a smart move. So we're going to go Broderick Jones here. We're going to pair him back up again. They looked at Georgia offensive linemen. They've had success with guys like Jamari Sawyer. Does he deserve a shot to start? Yes. But I think when the value is just too good, it's worth taking Broderick Jones and maybe kicking him to guard for a year and letting Jamari start at tackle. 
and then seeing where you can work and who's going to be the best fit at which position. Pick number 22. Uh, Bijan might be too hard to pass on here as well. Cornerbacks, there's just some really good ones on the board. Do not be surprised if Tyreek Stevenson jumped guys like Cam Smith. I would not personally. I think he's an absolute freak of nature, and he's going to run as fast as Cam Smith. I think he might be better than Cam Smith, and his dominance at the Senior Bowl gives us a little bit more recency in terms of the tape we've seen, and he had some really good reps there at the Senior Bowl. To me, I think Tyree Stevenson's going to be the dark horse of the draft, someone who I used to have going in the first, and I'm bringing him back. Pick number 23. Interesting how they have the needs laid out. Uh, to be fair, I'd probably just end up going the opposite of these two. Uh, if you want to switch them, I'd probably end up going Tyreek Stevenson anyways. Uh, lockdown corners there in man coverage with Cam Smith and Tyreek Stevenson. Pick number 24. Oh, man, we still got Bijan on the board. It's just tough to gauge where he's going to go. But if I'm the Jaguars, Osiris Torrance still is here. I would totally be considering him. I don't like how they say centers a need for the team. I don't think that's true. And... Um, Again, Osiris Torrance is just going to get that hype, and he is the best guard on the board. Kind of unfortunate because this interior class is kind of booty cheeks. But um, I'll scroll down so you guys get to see a little bit more of my board as well. And because I know I can get a guard in the next round. Uh, so if I'm them, I'd be considering Bijan just to pair up with Travis Etienne. At that point, it's kind of too good of value. Uh, but defensive back wise, Man, this is a stupid... I would totally trade out the spot. For transparency, I'm totally trading out. Uh, Breezy definitely feels like somebody who would be a very nice addition in there. You can add him to Foley, but it could end up just being another Taven Bryant. Not a huge fan of that, personally. I'm going to take Anton Harrison and stick him to guard. I used to do... Th I did that for you guys before. I'm going to do it again. He is 6'5", so that is palatable for him being a guard and uh, definitely could be a good get for a longer-term tackle at a much cheaper contract than guys like Walker Little. Pick number 25. Uh, to me, it's Zay Flowers, and pretty much that's it, actually, when looking at it. I don't see any boundary corners that I would take for this team over Zay Flowers, and I just want to give Zay a little bit of first-round hype. He does feel like a fringe one, too, and um, I want to give him that love. Zay Flowers going in there. He can play on the boundary as well. I feel like he's very similar to T.Y. Hilton in his prime, and um, apparently that's an insult now. I don't know. People need to get over their egos. But pick number 26. I'm looking at the tackles who are available, and I'm very happy to say Dewan Jones is the only one that I would consider at this spot. Dewan's going to make a very big move up for me as well. I forgot where I moved him up to. But um, Breezy would not be a bad choice, in my opinion, adding him to that group. I'm going to look at the boundary corners available. And Jalen Jones, definitely somebody who I want to continue getting back up the board. I think he'll test perfectly fine, and his tape is incredible. He's just somebody that no one throws at. So it's kind of hard to say whether he'll be a baller corner. And uh, I think it's just worth taking that shot. Jalen Jones, probably not the most athletic guy, but if I'm not mistaken, Trevon Diggs wasn't uh, like a 4-3 guy. I think he might have been a high 4 fours. So definitely seems to fit that system as well. Pick number 27 for Buffalo. I would say Bijan Robinson's just too good to pass on. So, you know, I could have taken him here for the Cowboys. It is likely, but this running back class is so deep and they do need other positions far more than uh, the Bills need Bijan. Pick number 28. So for me, I'm probably just going to go Michael Mayer here. Uh, Dewan Jones is super interesting. I think I did that in my last one, but... We'll go back to the default. Michael Mayer, if he's on the board, we're going to take him. Pick number 29, Brian Breezy. I know you guys need some help in the middle. I know you guys probably want someone who's more run stuffing, but I'm going to take the upside here with Brian Breezy. Uh, pick number 30, which would have been another good spot for Breezy to be. Uh, I think this one could be Lucas Van Ness. He fits exactly what you're looking for. Feels like a worse version of George Karloftis, who I loved last year. It uh, definitely feels like that's the best move, but I am going to go back and give some love to the big man, Dewan Jones, who would then be my pick at number 31 if he were there. Dewan Jones has been absolutely special at the Senior Bowl. He looks like he's refined his game and gotten even more comfortable in his body because there's a lot of reps out there where he has technical proficiency in his hands, 
but man, he just, his feet are just crazy and uh, he looks a lot better now. So pick number 31 for the Eagles and ending off this mock draft, we went after Joey Porter with that first pick. Lucas Van Ness does not feel like it should be out of the equation, but I'm going to go after Nolan Smith and then pair him up with his Georgia buddies there and be the successor to Hassan Reddick, who's been absolutely balling out. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned tomorrow for round number one of the trades mock draft. See you on the far side. Peace.